Hello my brother, this is the Order. welcome back to the Order. I'm Cut the Complar, and welcome back to another how-to video. And today, y'all, we are actually going to be covering the late era Galagos, or the 16th century Galagos warrior. Now, in this video, we will also be covering the Galagos nobleman from the 15th to the 16th century. The reason being I'm doing this in two, uh, well, uh, three people, uh, three uh, points in history, in one video is kind of obvious because one, the equipment at the time was always the same, and more than half the time, a lot of people get these guys confused, which is kind of weird, I know. But don't worry, we will do our Lake Gallo Gloss Levy video, uh, hopefully next time. Uh, now I want to put this out here, y'all. The equipment I'm going to be wearing is head of the Lake period, and as well, the equipment uh, varied from their user to user as many people would automatically know of uh, the Loka uh style helmet like this, which we will wear, but I'm not going to wear it a lot because one, that helmet I do not like. I'm going to put this out here. That is an Irish style barboot, and as well, the Gallo Glass noblemen that wore those helmets, they hated them for many reasons. And I could actually see why, because one, every time I swung my weapon over, which there's a lot of scenes you won't see in here, that apparently it was too dangerous for me to use, especially when I was using my weapon. Because one, every time I did a over the head swing like so, there was a scary point where it always kept hitting the tip of the helmet, which scared me. So yeah, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but as well, the equipment also changed in various type of forms. Uh, as you see me, I'm not wearing gauntlets right now. I'm not a fan of gauntlets for a thousand reasons. Plate armor gauntlets, I'm never the fan of. I've never, I don't know why, I just never have been when I was young, and I still am never uh, am a fan of them for so many reasons. But, yeah. Now, you also see me wearing this style of helmet, which is that of the 16th century. Gallo Glass that wore these style of helmets actually preferred to buy their own design, like this. In fact, this is known as the Gallo Glass Lobster Neck Helmet, or the Duck Bill Helmet. As the tip of the helmet, like this, that sports that, well, protrusion, looks like a duck's bill. Now, the back end, though, looks like a lobster neck, which they were also nicknamed Lobster Neck Helmets. Yeah. Try and name all the different variations of that. So, yeah. But these were the most common to see all used by the Gala Glass. Now, most Gala Glass preferred to buy these designs because one, they were cheaper and they were better quality in metal. As well, they could easily sporterize Celtic designs on them. Now, I will be using the Greatsword in this video, uh, even though the Gala Glass preferred not to use this because one, uh, these were not as effective as the heavy axe blow, as my fellow YouTuber and, uh, and friend Thing Grand has proven in one of his videos, that you could break the neck of your opponent just from the sheer swing into, say, this male mantle. So, it doesn't matter if the person is wearing mail or plate, you're going to have a broken neck. And even if it hits the cheek guard, you're going to have a broken jaw or worse. Although, I might have to have Thrand do a video where a helmet, using a helmet, something similar to this that I'm wearing, because this would be the most common that it would have been seen with. Now, Thrand also wants me uh, to help send him a axe just like mine, uh, which, let me get it real quick. Now, Thrand actually wants me to send an axe just like I have here, because one, this is the late era Galagos style axe. And the way my axe is, as he mentions in his video, it has a more protruding form forward. As you see right here, it's more reinforced up here for a more tip cut. Because this was where most of the impact damage was actually seen in his video. So, he does prove how horrifying of an axe this thing would have been on the battlefield. And as well, this is a 12 inch blade compared to his 7 inch. And this is, uh, yeah, this is going to be a, hor that will be a horrifying video if we ever do see it. Hopefully soon, though, Thrand, I will have it sent to you very soon, because I mean that would be just the most horrifying uh, weapon 
destruction video I could ever see. However, uh, what I'll have to do is have my buddies that made me this axe have to send it with just the axe head, because unfortunately it took forever to have it sent with the regular style pole on there. So, yeah, we might need to have it sent to you just the axe head alone, because unfortunately due to shipping costs and as well due to shipping manufacturing and all that, and it was a problem and a pain, so yeah, I'm just saving you time. But hopefully soon you will get it, probably hopefully by next year, and hopefully we can see more Galaga Glass Battle Axe videos. Because I could just already see the devastation that this style of axe will do compared to his axe, which he might want to do a comparison video. So yeah, that would be horrifying. Uh, but yeah, the Galaga Glass though would change their equipment over the past century. In fact, from the 15th to 16th century, we see an evolution in equipment and armor. In fact, they start to use buckler shields. Reason being, one, when it came down to combat, and you, say, lost your main weapon, like your axe or your sword, you would most likely need to use a buckler and shield, like a shield buckler, along with your uh, secondary weapon. Now I want to put this out here, though. Uh, only the most wealthy of Galaglass could afford a great sword and a regular sword, seeing the fact that these were the most expensive weapons. However, the majority of weapons that the Galaglass did use would always be the battle axe, which gave Galaglass a chance to fight with a regular style sword like this. Now, there are different variations of swords. Some of them were short-bladed swords, some of them long-bladed, so that way they could use it like that as a, a makeshift bastard sword, if you would. In other words, I could grab it with two hands, or just the one. Which, this would be the most common design, as we see with the Quillen design of the guard. Reason being is because, one, let's take a look where this thing's going to go. Especially right into my eyeball. In fact, some of these had projected points, so that way it was a lot uh, <laughs> more dangerous. As well, these could easily lock a blade a lot more easily than that of a regular sword. Because, one, the cross guards, it changed from time to time. So, most Galagas preferred this design, but with an Irish ring pommel. But, the Galagas preferred different variations depending on the user. So, yeah. As well, I mean, Derek, it would have gotten a lot longer than it is right now. Pretty much about that long with a needle like blade, which would have been able to penetrate through small ingots of mail, which is why these things were so horrifying. But the last era Galagos were, sadly, one of the most forgotten warriors in history. But, what do y'all think? Anyways, let's get right into the video.
as y'all saw, I was moving not as much as I was. Now, even though here in Texas right now it's getting cold again, the problem is with the heat in Texas, it mostly starts to come around when, it, when the sun starts to come up. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of the problem. Because <laughs> here in Texas, we don't have fall. We do not have any of that. In fact, I think we all that like we only have two forms of uh, weather: summer and winter. And winter we get rarely. And the thing is, when it comes to here in Texas, uh, it's a rare chance we ever get ourselves a chance of getting uh, spring. So yeah. This is why here in Texas it is very hard to walk around in a Texan shoe. Because Texas, as they say, is only meant for those who which can deal with it. But yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, now as y'all saw, me moving around, the equipment is still light and effective, but the problem is, is the equipment changed in different variations and forms. So, and I kind of glad I only did the bar boot a little bit because one, that thing, it's kind of scary wearing that thing and the worst part is I actually am going I was going deaf because unfortunately it was gr grinding against the mail like literally I couldn't turn left or right without it making a grinding noise which is why I rather prefer the style of helmet and we can see why because one other Galagos preferred this style of helmet in fact there are even some accounts that some Galagos would actually use a headbutt with this bill uh, brow here with this brow cover and it would devastatingly kill somebody. Now, one weapon that the Galagos hated the most on the battlefield would also be their very end, and that would be gunpowder. That's right, firearms and such would devastate the Galagos military units. However, I want to put this out here, many people don't understand this point in history, the Galagos also had a variation of units that which would even fight for Queen Elizabeth or as well later on, King James himself. And they were known as the Queen's Guard or the King's Guard faction. And sometimes there are accounts of them even using matchlock firearms, but this was rare. And most of the time though, they didn't look like this. They actually looked more like this. Now, none of y'all know what that is. Here's the thing. They would actually wear a hat known as an onion hat and wear a uh, buff coat vest, and that's about it. And these guys look the most dumbest thing ever, but apparently they were the great mercenary units that protected His Royal Highness for a while, until uh, they would later be disbanded entirely. This would later lead to the fact that one, the uh, Galagos would lose all their lands in parts of Ireland, and in such, they would no longer be known as earls, nobles, or any type of such. They would just be viewed as common soldiers, where most of them would later fight in the factions of either the Scots or as well in the factions of the English army. So, yeah, the 16th century saw the end of the Galagos military as a unit of combat. Now, don't worry, we will still do the Galagos levy very soon, but we won't include the matchlocks because, one, uh, as I said, the Galagos factions hated those, so yeah. As for the regular military units, I can't exactly add them in yet for the British military, because one, the English military would have used them, yes, as matchlock units, but in their own army. So probably when we get back to the 16th century and such, to cover, say, that of the English army of a, ma of a matchlock unit, I will probably bring him back, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, what did y'all like the most about the late era Galagos? And in such, what would be your favorite equipment they would have used? My favorite equipment that I love is this style helmet, although I was wanting to get this style helmet. The problem is, there were hardly any sellers out there that were selling these right at the moment. So, yeah, but hopefully y'all can actually uh, get your own set of equipment. I will leave links down below on the equipment where you can get 
for the equipment I was using in this video and the equipment I was hoping to use in this video. Anyways guys, like and subscribe for more as well, hopefully see you all in the next one, and as well, please help out Thank Grant as much as you can. He needs our help right now, and as well, check a look at his videos, I will also leave a link down below on where the Sparth destroyed the helmet, as he actually said it is the most devastating thing he has ever seen. In fact, that's saying something coming from him. <laughs> So hopefully see y'all in the next one, like and subscribe for more, and hopefully we'll see y'all very soon on the battlefields of Valhalla. Have a great day, y'all.